In this video, we're going to install WordPress manually, which does take a little bit longer than the so-called instant methods, but there are more security measures built into this method, and this way you're always going to be installing the most recent version of WordPress. But first, to keep things organized, go ahead and create a folder on your desktop relating to this WordPress site, name it whatever you want. Inside this folder, you should keep things like your images, your text or spreadsheet documents that contain the login credentials, your backups, anything related to this particular WordPress site, you should have one place on your computer to go to to find all those goodies. Okay, that's out of the way. Now, there's basically four things we're gonna do to create our WordPress site. We're gonna go to wordpress.org and download the most recent installation files. Then number two, we're going to unzip those files and upload them to our server. Now at this point, I need to assume that you've already got a domain name and a web hosting service. And you should also determine at this point, are you going to be uploading or installing WordPress on your root directory or on a subdirectory? Meaning, whenever you type in the URL to your WordPress site, is it going to be mydomain.com? Boom, there's your WordPress site. Or is it going to be in a subdirectory where you type in mydomain.com slash blog? Either way you want to do it is totally fine because the installation process is exactly the same. It's just where are you going to upload these files to? Number three, we're going to build a database. And number four, we're going to add our database to our WordPress site. And that's basically it. So let's go and get to work. Now I've already taken the liberty of going to wordpress.org and downloading the most recent installation files. And I want to point out that in a zipped up format, it's just a little bit over six megabytes. But whenever we uncompress those, as you can see, as I hover over this, it's almost 17 megabytes. And most every installation process recommends that you upload these files here. So I open that up. And this will take twice as long than if you were to upload a single zip file. But if you're going to do that fast way, as I'm about to show you, you have to send the right zip file. So you cannot send the zip file that you downloaded from wordpress.org. That's not going to work. So first, unzip them. And I do that in my Windows machine by right-clicking and then left-clicking on Extract All. Navigate to the location on my computer where I want those files to be extracted to. Click on Extract and we're good. And then you come up with something like this. Then open that folder and expose all the files. Then select the top file or folder in this case. Hold the shift key down on your keyboard, select the bottom file, and that selects all the files. And then just pick one of these files in here, it does not matter, and then right click and then compress, or in my case, send to compressed folder. It'll zip all these guys up into the one file right here, and that's what I'm going to upload to my server. But first I want to point out that if you click on this readme file, it opens up in your browser, and this gives you some more installation tips, updating tips, and so on. So when you get a chance, check that out. Now we head over to our file manager in our cPanel control panel and upload that zip file. Click on Upload, click on Choose File, navigate to the location of that zip file we just created, select that, click on Open, and it's going to begin the upload process. And while it's doing that, I'm going to come on back over here to cPanel and create our database. So scroll on down until you get to the Databases panel. Click on MySQL Databases. And if I'm going too fast for you, well, that's what the pause button's for. Now we want to create our database here, create a user here, and then tie the two together down here. And I'll get to that here in just a second. But first, let's create our database. Now you can put whatever you want in here. And if you make a mistake, don't worry, because they will tell you in big red letters. Click on Create Database. Copy this. But whenever you do this, make sure you do not copy that period at the end because that's not part of the name. I'm going to go ahead and paste this on a document that I got stashed away here. That's going to hold the database name, the database username, the database password, and a new database prefix. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's go ahead and paste this right here. It'll all make sense here in a second. Oh, and by the way, this stuff here, these are the username and the password for my WordPress administrator area. Again, I'll get to that here in just a second. So... Click on Go Back, come on down and create our user. And I'm going to use the same name for my username as I did for the database name. So I just want to copy this guy right here. Now you don't have to, you can name your username whatever you want, but this is just a habit I've gotten into. Now we want to create a strong password and I do that by using the password generator. Copy this, 
check that box saying that you did copy that, click on use password, click on create user, and I'm going to paste that password right here. And remember my database name and username are exactly the same, so we're good there. Click on go back. Now we need to tie the two together. If you've got multiple databases and multiple users, make sure that you select the proper ones from this drop-down arrow. Click on Add. Click on All Privileges. Click on Make Changes. Click on Go Back. And our database is all complete. Now we come on back up here and make sure our upload is finished. It is. Click on Back to Home. Select that file that we just uploaded. Come on up here and click on Extract. Click on Extract Files. Click on Close. Select that zip file again because we no longer need it. Let's go ahead and delete it. Click on Delete Files. We are good to go. Now we've got all the pieces of the puzzle put together. We just need to tie them all up. And we do that by opening up our browser. And in the browser bar, we want to type in the URL to our WordPress installation. And in my case, it was in the root directory. So I type in the URL to my root directory forward slash wp-admin slash install.php. Then click on your enter button and this is going to pop up where you then click on create a configuration file. This is going to pop up kind of warning you that hey you got to have all this stuff done first which we already do. Click on let's go. Now we want to copy the username, database name, and password into the appropriate boxes here. Oh and most every single time the database host name will be what is in here. That's the local host. But you do have certain hosting services like one and one or GoDaddy where that's not the case. So if you're not sure, go ahead and do this, leave that alone, and then click on submit. And if you get an error message saying something related to the database host is not correctly named, then contact your hosting service, find out what needs to go in here, and then redo this process. Now I'm also going to change the table prefix here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. You can change it to whatever you want. It's just that leaving it in the default WP underscore is one more thing that the hackers can use to get into your database and just wreak havoc all over your WordPress site. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and paste it here. And copy the username, database name, and password and put them in the appropriate boxes. Then click on Submit. And if all works well, this is what you're going to get. Click on Run the Install. Now at this point, you want to give your WordPress site a name. That's going to go in the Site Title area. Username and Password. And the email address needs to be an actively available email address because this is where information related to this WordPress site is going to be sent to. For example, visitors that want to send you money or visitors that want to contact you about your WordPress site. This is what they're going to use to contact you at. And the Allow Search Engines box, I always uncheck this upon installation because I really don't want the search engines or anybody else for that matter to see my WordPress site until I want them to. And there's a spot in the administrator area where you can recheck this box later on. Let's go ahead and fill in the blanks. And whatever you put in here in the password and the username, be sure and document them somewhere because you're going to need them to log in here in just a second. And something to consider for both username and the password, you've got these little hints down here below to give you an idea as to what you can and cannot or should not use in the username and the password boxes. Now here under the password, if it's something that's too weak, WordPress will not even allow the installation to take place until it's a stronger password. So keep that in mind too. And then when you get all the boxes filled in, click on Install WordPress, click on Login, and then enter your username and the password that you just created and click on login. Now at this point our WordPress site is created and we just logged in to the administration section of our WordPress site and that's it. Now if you want to check out what your brand new WordPress site looks like right up here in the top left corner click on the title or right here where it says visit site and that'll open up your browser to your brand new WordPress site and that is how you can manually create a WordPress site. Thanks for watching and you have a great day.